Today is Tuesday, November 21st, 2017, and my name is Scott Henshaw. I am in the Alumni House with Chris Fay, Assistant Director of Grounds at UNCG, to conduct an oral history interview for the UNCG Institutional Memory Collection. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to start the interview by asking you about your background. Can you please tell me when and where you were born? Yes, I was born in uh, Jamaica, New York. Um, I was uh, raised in Garden City um, in Nassau County. Um, a beautiful community with lots of large trees mm -hmm. and beautiful landscapes. Okay, and can you tell me about your family uh, and your home life? What did your parents do? Yes, um, my dad um, worked for Equitable Life Insurance in New York City and commuted on a train every morning to work. And um, my mom was a housewife. And um, unfortunately, I lost my dad when I was 12. And when my dad passed away when I was 12, um, I started mowing lawns on Long Island. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of uh, where I started with my career, is just yeah. mowing lawns in a residential neighborhood. Yeah. And can you tell me what high school you went to? Yes, I went to the, uh, Garden City High School and uh, graduated in 1977. Okay, and where did you go to college? I went to the State University of New York, um, Sunny at Farmingdale, and I studied uh, ornamental horticulture with a concentration in nursery management, which was uh, to grow plants. And what were your plans after graduation? Well, after graduation, um, I went up into the Connecticut area to work at a nursery. Um, I stayed up there for about six months. Um, I was engaged. Uh, my wife also is from New York. And um, her dad had gotten transferred down here to Greensboro. So uh, being in love, I uh, decided to follow her to Greensboro after the job in Connecticut. and. Um, pretty much how my career shortly after that began at UNCG. Okay. And so how did you find out about that first job at UNCG? There was an uh, advertisement in the Greensboro News and Record for a groundskeeper. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember uh, looking at the ad and it was going to be working on the grounds. I was a little bit familiar with the campus because when I visited um, prior in 19, uh, I guess it was 1978, um, I got an opportunity to come on campus. My wife's an alumni here, mm. and um, in between classes, I would meet her for lunch or walk the campus. And I remember um, just seeing how beautiful the campus was, as far as uh, a lot of large, beautiful trees, um, big open spaces. Um, little did I know, a year later, I'd be working on the grounds crew here. Yep. And can you tell me about your first impressions of UNCG, either that first time you visited or when you first started working? Um, a little different than the school I went to. I went to an ag agricultural school for horticulture, but um, just it, like I said, it was beautiful, large trees. Um, I believe when I first started, there was about 8,000 students uh, attending here at UNCG. Okay. And can you describe the campus when you first arrived here? How did it look? You, know, you said it had a lot of trees, but it's very different than it yeah, is now. Um, Back in the early 80s, uh, I don't feel like there was as much emphasis on the, uh, keeping the grounds uh, really um, as beautiful as they are today. Mm -hmm. um, things started changing in the mid 80s, and um, I'd started out, as I mentioned earlier, as a groundskeeper, and then I became a maintenance mechanic. I implemented a program to uh, repair equipment and um, maintain equipment. Um, a couple of years after that, I uh, became a supervisor and my right responsibilities was the turf management program, including the uh, athletic fields. Okay, so you've already started talking a little bit about the jobs that you've had here. Do you yes. want to give us a brief outline? Yeah, when I um, became uh, superintendent was April of uh, 1988, uh, uh, sorry, in 1988. <laughs> And uh, my responsibilities was uh, the grounds maintenance um, and landscaping of the campus, as well as the athletic fields, golf course, and the sanitation operation. Okay. Tell me about some of your favorite projects that were completed under your supervision. You know, all of the projects, um, whether small or large, um, highly motivated me to continue to do more. Um, I would uh, interact with my staff, and, as well as students, uh, faculty, um, administrators, and uh, own personal ideas I came up with to just continually try to improve the appearance of the campus. Um, 
You asked me earlier about my impression of the campus. When I first came, there was no um, annual flower beds. There were no. Um, there was not a very good variety of perennial plants, um, and even the plant material. Um, it, it wasn't as um, diverse as it became under my uh, supervision. I was always trying to seek out something that would be different to make us really stand out here at UNCG. So uh, I would come up here on weekends and tour the campus by myself when it was quiet and have a pad and pencil and write down some ideas and, and then try to figure out how we could implement them. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, tell us about some of your favorite projects, um, things that we talked about when we walked around, you gave me a tour, um, the EUC lawn. Yes, the EUC lawn, um, when I came to work here at UNCG, uh, Sterling Street actually went right through where the, um, the lawn area is now. Mm -hmm. And after the ex uh, expansion of the Elliott Student Center, um, the front area became, the lawn area became actually a gravel parking lot. So mm -hmm. it went from houses, residential homes, to a gravel parking lot and served for years. But it was kind of an open part of the campus that really needed to be addressed. So the university went ahead and w with the expansion went ahead and made a lawn area out there but didn't take a lot of time to really prepare and, and uh, get the soil conditions correct and really pick the right variety and just a lot of construction happening very quickly. So an administrator had asked one day um, to go do a tour and we barely left the Mossman building and he said, Chris, can you do something about this lawn? And I told him, uh, I'll have a number for you at the beginning of the week. So I put together a, a number and actually studied it and had determined that we really need to make it more like a golf course setting or a sports field, which has really high quality turf that could withstand a lot of traffic and a lot of activities. So we um, went ahead during the summer months, we went ahead and uh, added topsoil to the area, regraded the entire area, and we sprigged it in Bermuda grass. And sprigging is an interesting process where it's just the dry zones of grass. It almost looks dead when you first plant it, and you have to water it and, and uh, take a lot of care and fertilizer to get it up and running. And um, one of the things that just amazed me is after I got the grass established and, and growing, I can remember folks coming to the uh, parking garage and they were headed to Elliott Center and they would stop and they would take their camera out and start taking pictures of that area. And I was like, I really felt like, boy, I made the right decision yeah. there. And since then, it's been used for so many great activities. Um, you know, the homecoming activities and, and spring activities and students, I see them out there, you know, from uh, throwing a football or a frisbee to flying a kite or just letting their dog run. So it's just a mm -hmm. great, great project and I'm very proud of it. Yeah, it's a beautiful area. Uh, the athletic fields? Yeah, the athletic fields, um, back in the 80s, uh, my entire staff worked out from Oakland Avenue, and the sports division, was things were changing pretty quickly um, as far as uh, the number of sports being played and, and the space needed for these sports. So they started developing different projects. Uh, we, you know, we have a practice golf course out in that area, and um, they decided to go ahead and build a uh, soccer stadium. And um, during the soccer stadium renovation, they approached me about the pitch of the field. In other words, you know, it was built more like a football field, but it really needed to be a flat surface, but drainage was extremely important. So going, be, being very supportive from the university, they really were great about sending me to conferences. I was a member of the Sports Turf Managers Association, the North Carolina Turf Grass Council, Professional Grounds Management Society, so I had networking across the country. And I found out about a gentleman over in England that had developed a drainage system using the existing soil. So we regraded this, the field to a flat condition and actually inserted sand slits on the field that would make the field playable within hours after a heavy rain. Um, added sprigging to that field as well and had it ready to play in September, uh, I believe it was September 6th of 1991, and we started the project in June. So I was under the gun. It was a pretty stressful summer, mm -hmm. but we got the job done, and um, we had new irrigation put in, um, and uh, it, it was a really enjoyable experience to be sitting in the stands at that first game when, uh, when uh, the, the players started playing. It was just awesome. Yeah. And uh, the Campus Ministries pond? Yeah, Campus Ministries um, is interesting. Um, the building is actually owned by the Associated Joint Ministries and it's built on university land. 
and so it's pretty much private dollars and what they were approached me and we had done some landscaping for them on the front of the facility and they were very pleased and happy with what we had done to attract students so that they could come use those uh, services and uh, they asked me about the small courtyard behind the Associated More Joint Ministries which is a very small space it's probably not even 50 feet wide and I studied the area for a bit and went back and gave a presentation to the Associated Joint Ministries board um, asking for funding to build a, a small pond back there so uh, they were all for it and um, it's just a great place to kind of sit and relax um, and, and uh, you know private space um, one of the other things I, I added back at that, is, that project is a uh, granite bench. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier about teak benches on campus. Well, granite benches were actually uh, made by, sa by a s saving the uh, granite curbing off of uh, different roadways that were removed during construction mm -hmm. projects. Um, Jefferson Street in particular when they built the baseball field. So it's kind of a neat thing that you know we developed that in-house, in, in built these benches. Mm -hmm. And also another way to recycle. And another way to recycle. Yeah. <coughs> okay, great. Okay. So tell me about the people you worked with and uh, this could be your employees and working with contractors if they're any like that and explain what was necessary to complete most projects. Well in regards to my employees when I first started um, it was primarily um, American white and African American and um, as time changed, the campus and the uh, labor market became a lot more diverse as far as population. Even in Greensboro, um, people were moving in this area because they knew it was a great place to be. And um, I was very fortunate that um, over my career, I hired folks that were from all over the world, not just uh, the United States. Um, I had uh, some guys that were Montagnards from Vietnam to uh, guys from Mexico. Um, I had folks that were from, you know, uh, Michigan, um, uh, just about, it seems like uh, every state. Um, a guy that was from uh, Lumberton, an American Indian. So I had a really good, strong group. It made us very strong and uh, we had a lot of respect for each other. Yeah. Um, working with contractors, you know, was always a challenge because uh, there was always deadlines with projects. And I felt strongly that um, we wanted to make sure we got the best finished product that we could get because we were going to be maintaining it. Uh, so I spent a lot of time and I was very fortunate to be involved with the facilities management uh, group um, where I would be involved with these decisions and making sure that the contractor fulfilled his responsibility on projects. Um, using the best quality plants and um, making sure he did what was in the contract. Um, so I'm very proud of that. And mm -hmm. it, it, it was frustrating at times, but it was well worth the effort. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about your management style? My management style, uh, I like giving credit to people who, who came forward with ideas and worked hard. And, um, you know, at times I had to discipline people, but I tried to do that just one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and... Uh, motivate them and I guess since I was started out as a laborer or a groundskeeper I had a high level of respect for these folks because it's tough work it's not easy and um, you know you have to con continually strive to figure out a way to motivate folks and what I did find is that by creating projects beyond the regular day-to-day -day routine maintenance of mowing grass pulling weeds picking up litter that the projects were a great way to uh, pull the team together and um, make something special happen and they would feel very good about it. Mm -hmm. Now how are you able to fund c campus beautification projects given the constraints of state funding at the public university? Well that's a great question. Um, back in the uh, 80s right after I became uh, superintendent was the title at that time of grounds um, there was a repair and renovation projects that the university administration would look at every year and they were historically to repair roofs, repaint buildings, upgrade steam, uh, heating systems, things of that sort. And um, my uh, boss challenged me at the time with developing repair and renovation projects as they related to the campus. A good example was um, there were trash cans out on the campus and they were just 50-gallon uh, drums. 
Um, so, it, you know, aesthetically that was not the most pleasing thing. So we developed a program to implement nice receptacles that would be out for the students to use. And um, also we had uh, stumps on campus and trees that were failing. And um, we went ahead and put together a complete presentation for the administration to look at with dollars of funding these. And I was very fortunate that started around 88 or 89 and um, continued the whole time I was at UNCG. Um, and then as a, at, at year end, I would always have projects on, on board in case there was some funding left over. Mm -hmm. And um, took a lot of time to, to spend with the administration. Um, they, were, they were very interested in what I was doing and, and my ideas and were very supportive. Um, they would, would actually tour the campus with me and we would discuss potential areas that could be improved and then I was the guy that needed to make sure it got done. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Great. So in what ways did you incorporate sustainability into your projects and why is it important to you? Well sustainability, um, you know, that was the big buzzword uh, that started in the 80s or uh, late 80s into 90 and um, kind of uh, Recycling actually was the start of it. Um, the campus uh, basically just threw away all of its trash. We didn't do anything sustainable as far as separating the materials. And the students uh, were, were really pushing for uh, a position to be um, developed, and it was. Mm -hmm. And that uh, individual reported to me, so we started doing a, a waste analysis of, of what was going in the trash. And at the same time, it worked out really well because the city of Greensboro was also looking at way, the way they were going to handle the trash in Greensboro. Um, and they went ahead and um, worked with us to uh, start a commingled project where the materials were separated into one bin, such as you know plastic and newspaper and aluminum. And that was collected separately, and then it would go to a, the commingled site and uh, separate it again and uh, set, out, set out for recycling. But um, other areas of grounds, um, there was different types of turf that you could use that were more sustainable, requiring less water usage, mm -hmm. um, uh, less fertilizer, um, and less maintenance. Um, so we started implementing that on, on our sports fields, but also on the campus itself. Mm -hmm. Did, during your time here, what did, was that when the university went to using uh, sourcing groundwater and, as opposed to irrigating with city water? Yes, or? in the, in the mid-90s we had some really severe droughts in Greensboro and um, almost to the point that um, we, the university had to close down its water features on campus and um, we had to limit the use of water um, as far as our sports fields in particular because there was many, many acres of sports mm -hmm. fields. So the university embarked on uh, drilling some wells on campus and I was involved in that to uh, water the sports fields and also supply water to water tanks that we would take out and water our uh, summer annuals which require water almost mm -hmm. every day. Great. And how have you worked to save trees on campus? Well, trees are one of the biggest things I'm <laughs> extremely proud of. Um, during the um, construction which was just so much was happening at UNCG and um, you know when a bulldozer pulls up on site and starts going around some of your trees you got to be so sensitive to the root systems so once again I was very fortunate to work with uh, my boss and administrators to develop a uh, tree protection plan which would allow uh, to be incorporated in new construction or renovation that barriers would actually be put up with mm -hmm. signage to make sure that soil wasn't piled around the roots or roots weren't um, cut beyond a certain area of the drip line that would help preserve the trees and, and keep them alive and healthy. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about some of the tours you've given off campus over the years? I know we talked at length about the alumni reunion weekend. Or um, <laughs> you know, my, part of my job was constantly looking at the campus and making sure things were neat and clean and um, started using a golf cart to get around the campus. And as I would tour the campus, um, 
by myself, I started sometimes giving tours to students um, on the way of the classes. I could tell they were running late, so they, they would get on the golf cart, and I would ask them, you know, what they felt, how they felt about the campus. But um, the alumni weekend was one of the um, most exciting times for me because um, people were coming back to campus that may not have been here in 20-something years. Mm -hmm. So there were some major changes in the campus, um, which I got to see every day. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, a couple of uh, examples would be, um, I would be riding campus and I'd see some people kind of just standing, looking around like you know they, they had almost never seen the campus before. And I would approach them and ask them if they uh, were interested in giving them a ride to maybe the dorm that they lived in while they were here at UNCG or uh, some of the uh, buildings, new buildings, as well as some of the buildings in, where they had classes. So it was really exciting to see um, how the campus changed and how excited they were. Um, and not all my tours were on golf carts. I actually one year was approached by the um, the alumni group that put on uh, homecoming, not homecoming, but alumni weekend, and they asked if I would be interested in giving a tour of some of the gardens on campus, and that could I set this up? And you know, we're looking at maybe a dozen people, and would you know have a couple of golf carts and take them on out. Well, it became from a couple of golf carts to a couple of buses. <laughs> and so um, one of my staff took one group in one bus and I took one group in the other. And we toured the campus and actually went out and stopped at places and explained what was going on and how things changed. And I mean, it was this buzzing the whole time the bus was going and people were real excited. And it was funny, the morning that uh, this big tour was happening I woke up and I was like gosh you know I wonder if they get to go to yum yums they, they all you know they, will they have time to go to yum yums I said maybe I should contact my friend who actually uh, runs yum yums and um, we were able to go ahead and get some ice cream and serve it to them at the end of the tour and boy, awesome. that, that was a big hit yeah they absolutely <laughs> loved it my friend even gave me yum yums hat to put on so yeah. they, they it just brought back great memories and that's what it, excites people is memories yep. and changes and and uh, the beauty of the campus. Yep. That's awesome. Well UNCG has re re received many awards for its beauty while you were here. Uh, tell me about some of those awards uh, and I've got some listed here if you... Sure. Um, the first one uh, we, we applied for is uh, Tree Campus USA mm -hmm. and it, it's a mirror of the same program for uh, Tree City USA which Greensboro already had and there was a lot of, uh, there was a committee that we worked with to develop a tree um, s uh, program standards of how we deal with trees in regards to maintenance and care. And you also had to have in place a program where you did education with students, which I absolutely loved. Mm -hmm. So every year we would go ahead and do some tree plantings uh, with students helping and um, educate them on how to pl properly plant a tree and care for trees. Um, we also had to do a tree inventory of campus and um, also show the amount of dollars that were spent to care for our trees. And what's really exciting about that particular program, it's ongoing. You have to reapply every year and up to this year, we, we've been getting it every year since then. Mm -hmm. uh, Is there one project or award of which you are most proud? All the projects were fun. Um, but probably the, uh, the Green Star Award with the Professional Grounds Management Society. Okay. Do you want to say anything at all about the Gladys Strong Bullard Service Award that you received in 2013? Yeah, was, um, I was very honored to receive that too. Uh, it, it's based on leadership and a commitment to the university. And uh, yeah, I cannot stress enough how it was such a great opportunity for me to start as a grounds worker work my way up to managing the campus grounds and, and landscape and sports fields. Um, so I'm, I'm very, uh, very honored that, to receive that award. And what was your favorite part of the job? I, probably uh, the interaction with, with students and faculty and staff and uh, the alumni. Um, it, was just, it was just amazing the comments that I received from these folks that I could pass on to my folks that were out there every day doing this tough work. So that was really enjoyable and, um, and just seeing trees that I've planted and landscapes that were renovated and uh, see when they matured and how beautiful they are. Mm -hmm. I'd like to talk about Chancellor Sullivan for a bit. Uh, how well did you know Chancellor Sullivan? Well, Chancellor Sullivan, um, it's really kind of interesting. Uh, the first time I met Dr. Sullivan, 
she was uh, about to be interviewed on um, News 2 um, early at 6 a.m. in the morning. And I had my staff come in extra early that morning to make sure the grounds looked nice. It was out in front of the dining hall. Um, which I waited for an opportunity, um, and I noticed that she was going to be going on news shortly, and I had a minute to go up and introduce myself. And when I introduced myself to Pat Sullivan, she looked me right in the eye and said, Oh, Chris Fay, I've heard your name, and I really <laughs> love your curb appeal. <laughs> and I said to myself, Wow, this is going to be a great ride. Yeah. And it was. She had a very high interest in how the landscape was done at UNCG and maintained. And um, in the period of time that she served as chancellor, sent me well over um, a dozen thank yous for different projects and things that I uh, did, which I just kind of felt like was my job, but she really did appreciate. Mm -hmm. And it meant a lot to me. Um, over the years, uh, there were some projects that um, she had interest in. One in particular was implementing a program where students could sit out and relax on benches. Mm -hmm. And so um, it trickled on down to me um, to the point that she wanted to walk the campus and talk about this. So we did. We walked the campus and I had a map and we started looking at areas where these benches could be placed that students would use them and community visitors would use them. Um, and enjoy the landscape um, based on where they were at. So uh, we, we did a walking tour of the campus and it was a beautiful fall day and, and uh, Dr. Sullivan and I and uh, some of the administrators went out and we started walking the campus and she had that New York walk and I do too. <laughs> so she, uh, she didn't waste any time. She was very businesslike but very, uh, very focused on where this campus was going. And so that was a kind of a neat project to work with Dr. Sullivan on. And also Faust Park, she had a passion for trees. I mean, she was originally a biologist, and mm -hmm. so uh, she contacted us at one point wanting to know, uh, do we have a map of all the trees in Faust mm -hmm. Park? And so we went ahead and um, identified all the trees in the park and sent that plan up to her. And now we have trees labeled in the park mm -hmm. for folks to walk and see and, and, and learn about trees of the campus. And it's a great variety. It's a great place to look and, and learn trees. Sure. <laughs> Can you tell me about her dogwood in Faust Park? Yes. Um, after Pat Sullivan died, and it was so heartbreaking when she got sick and, and passed away, um, she got so much accomplished on the campus. Uh, it's just absolutely stunning. And Charles, um, Sullivan I became pretty close to because I was responsible not only for the campus but for the upkeeping landscaping at their house. Mm -hmm. So I would go over and check the grounds and make sure the contractor was doing everything they were supposed to. So Charles and I got pretty close and um, after she passed away Charles uh, said that he would like to get a dogwood tree and plant it in honor of Dr. Sullivan. And I said that'd be great Charles. So. Uh, after several conversations, um, I found a Coosa dogwood, which, which um, actually blooms right around graduation, and that was one of Pat Sullivan's most uh, enjoyable moments as a chancellor. Every year, graduation meant so much to her, uh, making sure, in my case, making sure the grounds look good, but uh, also uh, making it beautiful for the, for the students. Um, so we went ahead and selected a tree, uh, and it came out of Liberty, North Carolina, from a, a local vendor. And um, after I selected the tree, Charles said he was going to purchase a plaque and put a plaque at the tree, and I said, that would be great. And then he asked me, he said, uh, Chris, um, would it be all right if I sprinkle some of her ashes around the tree? And I said, Charles, of course, it would be fine. And it was a very small ceremony with myself and uh, some other folks that worked directly with the chancellor um, at their residence in particular and a priest and we uh, Charles uh, sprinkled the ashes around the tree and uh, read a, a little poem that he had written so it was uh, it was it was very very nice and I'll never forget it yeah, that's fantastic so you're now retired so tell us what you, you've been doing since your retirement <laughs> well I still work part-time I have a uh, business that I uh, maintain commercial properties here in Greensboro and I uh, work for some great, great folks that uh, let me pretty much have the run of it. So I'm always improving their properties. Um, and also I'm doing a lot of work around my house. Um, I recently became a grandfather. Um, I'm very excited about that. I have a little grandson who just got back from Hawaii. 
and uh, some projects I'm doing at my house is I'm building a fire pit currently and I recently uh, put up a greenhouse I'm gonna start growing vegetables and I have chickens and I also um, have a tortoise as a pet uh, lucky lucky 95 <laughs> I rescued from a lady uh, actually she rescued this tortoise walking along I-95 up in northern Virginia and was finding a better home for lucky down in this more southern uh, climate He's a sulcata, and he's actually from the deserts of uh, Africa, and he needs warm climate. And he's uh, 18 inches wide, 24 <laughs> inches long, and 62 pounds, and he's kind of a cool animal to have. And I've done some traveling. Like I said earlier, I've been to Hawaii, spending more time, time with my wife and kids, and mm -hmm. just uh, enjoying getting out and for a change, smelling the flowers instead <laughs> of planting the flowers. Yeah, sounds great. Now, do you still visit UNCG to check out your legacy? Yeah, I do come by. Um, I'm very fortunate. After my retirement, um, a faculty member went ahead and uh, raised some funding to plant a tree on campus, and I really enjoy going to see my legacy maple, uh, which is planted over by um, Everhart. And, um, I also, you know, just enjoy bike riding and, and still interacting with students. I get on a bicycle, I ride through campus, and I get to see things I planted many years ago that are now large trees and uh, very mature, beautiful landscapes, um, you know, from the sports fields involved in to the front of Elliott Center, which is a beautiful lawn area for entertainment. Uh, so I get to still see all that, and I enjoy just coming through and taking a look and see what's going on. Great. Well, tell me how UNCG has affected your life and what it means to you. Well, you know, it's almost like a dream uh, that it's, it's not very usual that you start a career at 21 or 22 and it's pretty much your whole career. And in this case, it was for me. Um, mm -hmm. I had a few other jobs before, but the impact to be part of the complete transformation of this campus from an 8,000 student campus to almost uh, 19,000 when I retired is just mm -hmm. incredible. Uh, the amount of construction and change and renovation, I don't think there's a part of the campus that didn't change while I was here and to be a part of that mm -hmm. and, and, and feel really appreciated for what I got to do. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, it was just outstanding. I don't have any more formal questions for you. Is there anything else that you would like to add to the interview? No, I feel like we covered, well, they, they say a lot of real estate. So, uh, <laughs> anyways, good. I've enjoyed it, Scott, and I really am honored to be selected to do this interview, and uh, it means so much to me. Thank well, we're, you. We're, we're glad to have you here, and we're so glad to have you talk to us. Thanks. Thanks.